Guys, welcome back to another episode, which is 78 now. All right, I know it's moving a lot slower now that I'm doing three workouts a week instead of six, but I feel amazing. The four rest days every week is just like rejuvenating me. All right, I feel like I've hit the fountain of youth and I feel incredible. I feel like a new man. And you'll see soon in a few minutes the big PR that I hit on dumbbell incline press. All right, for shoulders today, I decided to go easy, which is what I'm going to be doing from now on. I'm going to be going very easy on shoulders on the day that I do dumbbell incline bench press. Because I figured out last week, and you guys saw if you watched last week's one video where I did dumbbell incline, I went heavy on behind the neck presses for shoulders right beforehand, doing the chest workout, and it really affected the reps that I got. All right, it went down like two, three reps. It was a bad showing. It was not great. Not a good look for me. But the workout that I'm going to be doing on dumbbell incline press days for shoulders will be most likely this workout, rear delt flies, just to get the rear delts some work. Very easy and very light workout. It's not going to exhaust me for dumbbell incline. And that's exactly what happened on this day. But the PR was 10 reps for the first set. And that's the most I've gotten on that workout. I have only reached up to nine reps. And that's, of course, with 95-pound dumbbells. So I got a response in one of my comments in the last video asking for some studies and articles showing how lavender is estrogenic. So I will be leaving not one, but two studies, well actually one article, one study, in the description box down below that shows how lavender and also tea tree oil is estrogenic for us. So let me pull it up right here. I'll go over the article first. So the article's title is Chemicals in Lavender and Tea Tree Oil Appear to be Hormone Disruptors. So we all know that lavender and tea tree oil are among the so-called essential oils that everyone's raving about, right? You see a shampoo, it's like tea tree oil. All right, got to get that. That's like the best shit, right? Because that's what the bottle says. It's really just a marketing tactic though. And I'll show you guys why in this study right here, which is titled Lavender Products Associated with Premature Thalarch and Prepubertal Gynocom... Comastia. All right, so everyone knows gynecomastia. A lot of you guys probably see it on social media like, oh, if you have gyno, you're on roids. But actually, you could have gyno and just be low testosterone. Gyno is a side effect, I would say, from being or having low testosterone and having higher estrogen levels. And it says right here, lavender and tea tree oils whatever you want to call it, marketing tactic, right? They are endocrine disrupting chemicals. And of course, the result of this is that three prepubertal girls and one boy with clinical evidence of estrogenic action in a history of continuous exposure to lavender containing fragrances were studied, breast growth dissipated in all patients with discontinuation of the fragranced products. Some of the components tested elicited estrogenic and anti-androgenic properties of varying degrees. So anti, or I should say androgenic, um, is testosterone building, right? And it's saying it's anti-androgenic properties of varying degrees. So not good, not good at all. And I mean, that's very, that's a big issue. Okay. I, I was in high school and I mean, no shit. I was in high school, but when I was in high school 
and you know all the guys were changing in the locker room right for gym class i would just look around and notice one thing most guys had man boobs okay and it didn't change i went to college um played college baseball we get back from a game everyone's changing and i'm not trying to sound like gay or anything no i have a girlfriend not gay okay for all you guys are gonna blast me in the comments or whatever but it's hard not to notice that every guy not every guy but most guys have man boobs they don't have like well-developed pec muscles okay even the skinny guys guys that are skinny they have like skinny waists they don't have much blubber around their waist they have saggy man boobs and all I could ask is like, what's it from? What is this shit from? What's causing this? Okay, and how do we fix it? And lo and behold, it's what we put on our body and what we put in our body. So the next thing I'm going to be discussing is milk and pretty much any dairy product, a low quality dairy product, and how they are also estrogenic. So I have a study right here from the National Library of Medicine, which is what the other study about lavender is also from. You guys will see down below. And it states hormones in dairy foods and their impact on public health. So it's just a narrative review article. But the results state that the collected data from other researchers and our own data are indicating that the presence of steroid hormones in dairy products could be counted as an important risk factor for various cancers in humans. So my take on this is that, yes, steroids, you know, chickens, cows, whatever you want to call it, that are pumped with steroids, GMOs, whatever you want to call it, yeah, no shit, that's going to be estrogenic. But another thing that I think causes products, dairy products from said animals to be estrogenic is what they're being fed. So I, I kind of briefly touched on this in the last video. A lot of animals are fed grain and soy. And a lot of the cheap ones, you know, the ones that are in China factories, right? They're fed grains that have mold in them. We all know mold is estrogenic. I don't have to put a study out there for that. Everyone knows mold is estrogenic. You should not want to be eating anything that has traces to mold. It's disgusting, right? So cheap grain and soy. We all know soy is estrogenic, right? That's where the term soy boy comes from, okay? Everyone knows that. So they're getting basically just an estrogenic feed. And yeah, it may have a bunch of protein in it, but they're fed all this estrogen can't be good for us, right? And then on top of that, they're juiced up with steroids to make up for the lack of size in the animal that was caused by the shitty ass feed, which is kind of hilarious <laughs> if you think about it, but very fucked up. And just seeing all these things, it's like, no wonder guys have low T nowadays. So many guys have it. They suffer from it, right? Can't get hard in the bedroom. Have no motivation. That's the big one right there. A lot of guys have no motivation. And that's a side effect of having low testosterone, right? You have no drive. You have no will. You just don't feel like doing anything, okay? You just feel like sitting around playing video games all day. And no shit. No fucking shit. Look what everyone's being fed, what everyone's washing themselves with. It's fucking terrible. All right, and I hate to curse so much, but it's serious. And I'm not just going to be here in this video telling you guys, oh, it's all shit, and I'm not going to tell you how to fix it. I am going to tell you how to fix it in the next six minutes, because that's how much longer this video is. So the first step when it comes to the lavender, whatever, whatever shampoo, body wash you're using is to use something else, right? Change it up. So I will tell you guys what I use. And I'm going to first start by saying what I wash my body with. 
So I use a soap bar from a company called Vintage Tradition. It's made from two things and two things only. Cold press, organic, extra virgin olive oil from this like island in Italy or whatever. Off the coast of Italy. I don't freaking know. That's what this says on it says on their website. And also 100% grass fed beef tallow. I've already talked about this product, but when I started using it, I don't get sunburn anymore. I used to always get sunburn when I would use big name, big name brands, body wash, shampoo, such as Dove, okay, even Native. I know they always say like only 10 ingredients in this, but even when I was using Native body wash and shampoo, I was getting crazy sunburn and I'd be out in the sun for like 10 minutes, not even. And I'm a fair skinned guy. But once I switch to this soap bar, no more summer. It's freaking awesome. All right. I just get like a, a light tan and it's gone within like a few days. It's pretty awesome. I highly recommend you guys check it out. Now for hair, hair's going to be a lot different. Okay. I don't actually use anything that's sold in stores for my hair. What I do use, and you guys are probably going to blast me for this as well. But I wash my hair with an egg. Yeah, you, you heard me right. A freaking egg yolk, okay? I crack an egg. I separate the white from the yolk. Okay, put the yolk in a bowl. I also take the membrane of the egg out of the bowl. So it's just the yolk, right? Stir it up, bring it up to the shower, and put that in my hair. And I only do that twice a week. That's to wash my hair. Now to moisturize the hair, whatever you want to call it, make it smell nice, I use just a pinch of organic coconut oil. If you guys have never used coconut oil for a moisturizer for your skin or your hair, you need to hop on that shit. It is phenomenal and it smells amazing. I also use it for deodorant. Okay, I mix just a little bit of baking soda with the organic coconut oil for my deodorant. And it only takes a little pinch to rub on your armpits and I don't have any more BO. I used to struggle so much with sweating problems, BO, and I would put a shit ton of like speed stick on, Old Spice, you know, all the freaking deodorants or whatever, and they wouldn't work for me. Okay, I'd still stink, still sweat a shit ton. And I know that came out, the news came out about aluminum in deodorant quite a, quite a while ago. So everyone knows about that. But just switching to the baking soda and the coconut oil, what a drastic difference it has made. And it's all natural. It's cheaper. Shit lasts forever. Okay, you just need one big jar of organic coconut oil and baking soda. And you have deodorant for like years on end. And you smell great. And that's all I do. That's all I do to wash myself. Okay. And it's amazing. I highly recommend you guys hop into it. Now, one thing I do want to touch on is colognes. Okay. I know a lot of guys like smelling like man whores or whatever. You guys like cologne. You go out to clubs or whatever parties. I don't do that shit. But if you guys do it, odds are you're probably wearing cologne. And a lot of colognes you got to watch out for, they have lavender in them. You got to watch out for that stuff. Always read the ingredients, see what's going on, see what you're spraying on your body, okay? And honestly, I say you don't even need that shit. I really don't see the point in cologne. You should want to smell like a man, not like a little little girl or whatever. I, I think colognes smell like like girl products, right? Let's be honest here. But back to the workout, doing barbell hack squats here. And you guys will see in a minute or two, probably actually 30 seconds. But I posed in a different room in my house for this video. <clears throat> and the lighting was great. You guys will see. And honestly... My definition for my back, it's not really there anymore, 
Like it's it's still you can still see I have a good back, but when I was very lean, the definition's crazy. So when I look to drop a few a few pounds probably, I'm interested to see if my back returns to that and see how much muscle I actually grew on my back. Because right now I'm on I'm at 199 pounds, touching 200. I'm 203 with shoes and clothes on. And I'm 199, you know, just underwear on, whatever. You guys can see right here the posing. Feeling very big at the moment. I can put a lot of food down. Tonight I'm about to eat like freaking 20 meatballs with rice. It's going to be epic. And honestly, I'm very proud of this so far because I know I've put on a lot of muscle. I was 181 lean and I'm 200 still kind of lean. All right, I'm not fat. Yeah, I got more fat on me, but I'm not fat. But guys, that's the video. I'll see you in the next one.